This is Lucy and Susan Letcher, otherwise known as Isis and Jackrabbit, reading from their Appalachian Trail memoir, The Barefoot Sisters, Southbound. In this podcast, Jackrabbit reads about hiking through Pennsylvania in late fall, where sharp rocks, cold weather, and a mistake with their food supplies set the sisters' tempers on edge. As evening drew on, we finally heard traffic, Pennsylvania 501. We quickened our footsteps, and I licked my lips in anticipation. Real food! The shelter was a converted studio built of dark wood across the lawn from the caretaker's one-story home. We unlatched the door and stepped inside. The final rays of the sun streamed through a hexagonal skylight in the center of the roof. For a shelter with four walls, it was not as cozy as we'd hoped. The ever-present wind worked its way through cracks in the walls and floor, and the persistent chill of a day in the shadows hung in the corners. We looked around, mouse hangers dangling from the ceiling, sturdy wooden bunks, metal trash can, shelves of magazines and ragged old registers, a hiker box picked through to the dregs, a table scattered with candle stubs and the detritus of old feasts, red and white printed menus, napkins, stray spots of pizza grease reflecting the last sunlight like coins from a lost treasure. We laid down our packs, hung the food bags, and set out our sleeping bags on the most sheltered bunks. Isis emptied our trash bag into the metal barrel. With the preliminary chores done, we salivated over the menus. Pizza, subs, salad, all manner of fried appetizers. It didn't take long to choose. We get a pizza primavera for tonight, white pizza with broccoli and onions, plus a Greek salad and onion rings, and two eggplant parmigiana subs for tomorrow. It would be the first full meal we'd eaten in three days. I rubbed moisturizer on my feet, put my camp shoes on, and went out to look for twigs and water so we could boil a pot of tea with supper. Isis went to the caretaker's house to ask if we could use the phone. I was drawing a pot of water from the spigot on the side of the shelter when she returned, her face set like stone. They don't take credit cards at the pizza place and we don't have any cash left she said in a small voice. I wish I could say I reacted in a sympathetic way, but my temper took over and I let loose a string of expletives instead. The visions of a scrumptious filling dinner vanished as the last slice of orange sun sank below the horizon. The leafless skeletons of oak trees silhouetted in the purpling sky seemed to be mocking us as they tossed their arms in the rising wind. Now what? I growled between my teeth, but the answer was obvious. I slouched off to gather more twigs for the stove as Isis wordlessly unpacked dinner from my food bag. As a consolation prize, she chose the pasta and not the infernal potatoes. Then I remembered the beer that the weekenders had given us. At least we'd have something to drink with supper. We crouched outside the corner of the shelter to cook, not wanting to risk a spark on the tinder dry wooden floor. The wind ripped past, stirring the dry leaves on the ground and wicking our body heat away, even through layers of clothing. It took several tries to get the stove going. Eventually, a crumpled up pizza menu with its cargo of grease did the trick. The meager pot of noodles bubbled and steamed as Isis fed the fire. I sat just upwind, breaking the wood into thumb-sized pieces. Neither of us spoke much, lost as we were in dreams of unattainable pizza. Inside the shelter, Isis scraped the last of our olive oil, now a gelatinous solid, out of its bottle with a debarked twig, and mixed it with the noodles and a half packet of dry pesto. The scent of basil lifted into the cold air. We lit a few candles. In their flickering light, the shelter was transformed. Even though my stomach still growled, and the wind whined like a hungry dog around the eaves, everything seemed warmer and softer. As I sat back in the chair, I thought, yes, we are lucky indeed. We divided up the pot of pasta, and I opened the beer. Damn it! Half the beer gushed out over the table in a foamy rush, and the other half, mostly water, I guess, sat in the can, still frozen. We drank the little that we could get and savored a few bites of angel hair. I got up from the table after dinner, and my stomach gave a huge, empty rumble. I can't take this anymore, I shouted. Why can't we fucking get enough to eat just for once? 
Isis sighed and stared at me for a moment. I waited for another comment about my language. And then, as often happens between us, we had the same thought at the same time. We both glanced toward the hiker box, and our eyes met. We smiled. In a moment, we were laying out the contents of the box on the pizza-stained table. There were the ubiquitous bags of unidentified white powders, a Ziploc of instant rice with a suspicious ragged hole in the lower corner, sugar-free Kool-Aid, a very post-dated tube of squeezed parquet, and a nearly empty jar of Jif, a mysterious dehydrated substance resembling jerky. Near the bottom, though, there was more promise. A couple baggies of grains, which we identified tentatively as millet and quinoa, and two instant breakfasts. Isis took her headlamp and fetched a pot of water, and I found more firewood by the dim light of the photon. We huddled outside the door, sheltering the stove from the blasts of wind, but our mood had changed from glum to triumphant. We had faced down adversity together once again. As we do sometimes to cheer each other up, we began exchanging lines of doggerel. It was late one night down at 501, and we were running low on cash. We were glad for four walls around us and a place to put our trash, but we couldn't order pizza. So we were feeling blue till we had the bright idea of making hiker box stew. We had a name for our concoction, and the list of ingredients grew more and more outlandish as our rhyming went on. In reality, the stew was a sweet pudding with the grains, instant breakfasts, dry milk, sugar, and cinnamon and nutmeg from Isis's stash of spices. We'd managed to salvage a bit of the instant rice from the top of the mouse-chewed bag, checking it carefully for nasties and finding it clean. Isis tried a tentative spoonful. It's, well, it's like rice pudding, except with not much rice and no raisins and no eggs. It was certainly unusual, but our hunger made it delicious. We made enough to fill our two-liter pot, and we ate half of it, saving the rest for breakfast. At last, our bellies were full. In the gleam of the many candle stubs, the feeling of satisfaction returned, and this time nothing marred it. We decided to transcribe our silly poem for the register. It was late one night down at 501, and we were running low on cash. We were glad for four walls around us and a place to put our trash, but we couldn't order pizza, so we were feeling blue, till we had the bright idea of making hiker box stew. We added a box of instant rice, perhaps some millet too, and something that might have been quinoa went into our hiker box stew. We added an instant breakfast to make it nice and sweet, and shaved off part of a Snickers bar for an extra special treat. Then we added a handful of peanuts to make it look less like glue, and half a packet of Gatorade and a bunch of Skittles too. So next time you're feeling hungry and you don't know what to do, think of us here at 501 eating our hiker box stew.